I know, I know, I've been, uh, I've been away for a little bit, but I've been busy, I'm doing artwork, I'm doing a couple of projects, but today we're doing something different. Today we're going to fix the brakes on my Tiger. Welcome back. So I'm still riding my trusty Triumph Tiger 800. Uh, those who know me I ride pretty much 365 days a year, uh, all year round through the winter. And a couple of weeks ago I managed to do something stupid. I've managed to bend one of the front uh, disc brakes. How did I do it? Well, I guess some of us know already I left a disc lock on it um, and I just forgot about it. I moved from a spot uh, it stopped me straight away, nothing happened, I didn't collapse, the bike didn't fell down but the front right disc brake is slightly bent to a degree. Let's have a look at it. Don't know how well you'll be able to see that but the uh, that's the uh, front disc brake, the caliper is right there and if you spin it around it goes kind of smooth until it hits the spot which is right here and it makes it very difficult to turn in fact I need to apply some force until you go past this and it spins again a little bit it's not super free so I need to do something about it also looking at the brake disc itself you can see how unevenly it is um, scored and it's quite a bit worn as well I mean I could do probably another 10 maybe 20,000 miles on this uh, but you know what, might as well change it. I can't straighten it back, it's my own fault. Let's get it changed. It is not a difficult job, something you can definitely do yourself. You've got some basic skills. You need to loosen up the pinch bolts, um, remove the, uh, the brake calipers from both sides, and the axle. Once you do that, the wheel pops out. Let's get it done. Okay, so the problem I'm experiencing here is removing the actual caliper from a disc brake. Um, and the reason for that is um, the middle, the inside of a disc brake, it's worn by the very edge, the very last probably one or two mil isn't, because that brake pad is not even touching that part. And that creates a little bit of a lip on uh, both ends. So what I need to do is to compress the pistons a little bit so the brake pads um, uh, detract basically back into the caliper. If I can't do it by hand, I'll try to push it a little bit with a um, clamp, just a little bit, get them to retract ever so slightly, and that should release the pressure. I can probably use the spoke on the other end just to push it in. There we go, it's coming now. Right, they go on, the ones I have them out, it's probably a good opportunity to give them a little bit of a service. But that's a story for a different episode. Let's focus on the disc brakes. After removing the two pinch bolts here completely with an Allen key, we can remove the axle. And I don't have an Allen key big enough for the axle, but I've made a little tool for uh, removing the forks. Uh, fork tops on my uh, Virago some time ago. It's basically a bolt welded to a steel rod and that fits in Perfectly over here, which is kind of lucky really because I Could have made another one, but that just works absolutely fine must be the same diameter, which is very convenient The Tiger has done just over 50,000 miles carry my fat ass you know from A to B um, and the discs they are worn, they're not anywhere to its legal limit, but because one is bent, I need to replace it, and I need to replace both of them. So what I've got here is a wavy um, disc, which is uh, same spec for the Tiger. I didn't got it because it looks uh, fancy and, and, and for the blink factor. Now I got it because it was actually cheaper than the original Triumph. Um, original Triumph is... Uh, just shy of 200 pounds, I think it was 198 with VAT. That's a single disc, so two of them is a 400 quid. Uh, for this, I paid, I believe, 144, that's with VAT per disc. So uh, it's nearly 100 pounds cheaper, if not more than that. 
and I read the reviews on them and they equally good you know um, it's not a performance motorcycle um, but if it stops me I'm happy with that so I'm gonna go ahead and replace these bad boys to do this I need the uh, Torx uh, T40 over here so far so good By the way, I just realized it probably would be easier if I at least cracked them open while in the motorcycle, while still on the ground. That would be easier because the forks, the bike holds it while on the ground, but I didn't think of that. Luckily, they're not too bad, so uh, I can do one side at a time. With the discs out of the way, um, I've got nice easy access here, so I take this opportunity to do some uh, housekeeping and cleaning, deep cleaning here. Um, I'll never have this opportunity with the discs on it, so uh, this is optional. It's not a part of the process, but I like to do it when I can. Don't get me wrong, I'm not I'm not a kind of guy who cleans this bike all the time. I'd rather be riding it than cleaning it, to be honest. Um, but that's not the point. I've, I've got easy access here, and I take the advantage of it. But then there's plenty of guys like this. I mean, it's probably some of you, you know. How many of you will not ride a bike when it's raining? How many of you will, you know, take it out of the garage just to give it a clean, even though it's spotless? You know, and, uh, it's not wrong with that. You know, I'm not judging you. It's not wrong with that at all. I'm just saying I'm not that kind of guy. I'd rather be riding the bike rather than cleaning it. But I've got easy access here. And it didn't take more than 10 minutes and how much better does it look, you know? I won't be having this opportunity anytime sooner, I hope. <laughs> That's how I remember to remove my disc lock before I fucking ride it. Light, moving on. Right, next thing I want to do is uh, get rid of the uh, old thread lock. Um, there's a blue one using here and there's some um, residue inside the actual blind holes and on the bolts itself. Some people like to replace the bolts, um, but I think, and that's just my thinking, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think if the bolt is cleaned up, I mean, they're not exactly under um, a huge amount of stress over here. I know they breaks, um, but they don't being bent as such because they got the collar, and they're not being extremely heat treated. Uh, I don't, I've never seen the manual somewhere that tells you that you need to replace the bolts every time you replace the disc brakes. I may be completely wrong on that. Uh, don't do what I do, do your own research. But I'm gonna reuse them bolts. I'm gonna clean them up and use the exact same bolts with a new thread lock. If you think I should change them, um, drop me a comment below and uh, explain why. Don't just say you have to change them because you have to change them. Uh, tell me why you think I should change them. Give me some evidence and I'll revisit that. I'll be very happy to do that. But until then, I'm just gonna do what I think is best saving money as well. These boards are not cheap, so there's nothing wrong with them. I try to use them as they are. Right, um, I don't believe these are directional. Uh, they, they're not, but there's, there's outside and there's inside, so just don't install it um, the other way around. It's kind of obvious because um, then bobbins I'm sticking out the other way around so they're going in and they've got um, writing on top so just it's kind of obvious which way they go uh, I'm gonna apply some uh, thread lock on the screws I remember there was a generous amount on the original ones so I'm not gonna go too crazy but I apply kind of I'd like to say same amount on these and they will spread nicely. And the most important bit is to torque them up evenly. And by looking at the torque spec, they are I think they're 22 Newton meters. I'll double check it. I'm pretty sure that's where they are. So I just apply the torque settings evenly in a star pattern.
Cool. 22 newton meters is not a huge amount, uh, but they again, they don't really need to be. Why would they? Uh, there's a different forces running on these bad boys, so I'm confident that will do. But to be on the safe side, I'm going to put a little bit of a blue dot with a water based marker on each end, and I'll keep an eye on it for the next, well, days. If any of them move, I know I got a problem, but I'm hoping they're okay. And when I'm fully confident, I can either leave it on or just wash it off. Let's do the other one and then mount it back on the bike. The installation procedure is the opposite of removal procedure. I'm not going to bore you with that. I'm just going to get it done. Now with everything back on and torqued up up to spec, the absolutely crucial part is you must pump that brake. Pump it a few times because it will go all the way to the handlebars. Um, until the disc brakes actually bite. It was going to take two or three times and then you feel the resistance. You know, the last thing you want to do, take it for a test drive, test ride, and you press it and there's nothing there, and you press it again, there's nothing there, and you press it again, and you hit the car in front of you. <laughs> you don't want to do that. So yeah, make sure this is pumped. And straight away, if I lift it off the ground, I can see the wheel is actually spinning. There's a bit of resistance still from the brake pads. That's sort of normal, but before I wasn't, I wasn't able to do that. The wheel was just stopping immediately because of that bad boy. But now we are smooth. Does it look better? I don't know. Some people like that look. I believe this uh, wavy, um, wavy design was um, it was designed originally for motocross bikes to uh, scoop the mud um, from a brake discs from a brake uh, caliper, uh, and later on it was introduced for. Uh, performance bikes as well, but I, I don't know um, from reviews. I don't believe there's any performance upgrade as such It just looks different. Um, some people say it chews through the brake discs um, Brake pads sorry quicker because of the design. I, I don't know um, I'm gonna take it for a spin and I come back to you see how it how it works Right yo, we are all done here uh, just before we take it for the test drive Remember one thing, you've done it yourself. Are you competent? Well, I'm definitely not. So I'm going to take all the precautions. I'm going to make sure I'm wearing the full protection gear. I'm going to go very slowly to start with. Uh, stop a few times, double check things, double check them lines, nothing's coming off. Uh, go in the control environment. Don't fucking go 120 miles an hour down the road testing your new brakes because it may end up very, very badly, especially if you've done it yourself. Um, I come back to you and I uh, let you know how they're performing. See you in a bit. Right guys, I'm back from a test ride and does it ride any differently? Not that I can tell. Does it stop better? No, it doesn't stop any worse. Uh, there's no immediate visibility or improvement on handling and stopping power and stopping distance. I, I can't feel anything. Again, I'm not a performance rider. I just ride from A to B on this bike and it does exactly what it's supposed to be do. So there's no improvement or no disadvantage above the uh, standard uh, original ones from Triumph. Uh, so I save myself 100 quid. I'll see how they're gonna be in the long run because um, what the difference may be. Uh, I'll see how long they last, how will they perform when they uh, wore down a little bit. Uh, they obviously still need to bite a little bit more. Uh, they still need to bed in with the uh, uh, disc pads, uh, the brake pads, uh, as well as the, the disc. They need to kind of become a unity, find the grooves and stuff. Uh, I've only done, uh, 10 to 15 miles, so there's still a lot more to test on but so far so good Now you're gonna ask uh, what are they the, the brand of the disc? Uh, I'm not gonna tell you if you want to know um, uh, Message me below. Uh, I may reply to you the reason for that. I'm nobody paid me to, to say these things and nobody Sponsored me the discs. I bought it myself with my own money uh, there's no sponsoring or advertisements over here. So if you want to know uh, what they were, uh, message me, I'd be happy to tell you. But that's about it, guys. Uh, once again, thanks very much for watching. More uh, airbrushing coming soon. But before that, have a beer, rock hard, and I'll see you. See you very soon. Thanks.